not very impressed very often. I've had the extreme privilege of meeting extraordinary human beings from around the world. Very few are able to match our guest tonight, and I say this in all uh, honesty, and I am so excited. I, I know you're on already, Steve. How are you tonight, Steve G. Jones? I'm doing great, Tony. Thanks. I just wanted to um, hear your voice and have people hear your voice, and um, I have my associate as well, Matthew James. How are you tonight? Awesome, Tony. How are you? I am awesome, too. You know, we've, we've been talking about Steve for several weeks here, and the more we have found out about you, Steve, through our own uh, inquisitiveness, the more impressed Matthew and I and, of course, our whole team has become. <laughs> so this has been really fun. Uh, you know, Matt, why don't you share some of the accolades of, of just to give people an idea of who Steve G. Jones is? Well, Tony, it's a long list. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> exciting. You know, for everyone that's tuning in, Steve's actually authored over 20 books on hypnosis. To top it off, he studied psychology at Harvard as a Doctor of Education degree from Georgia Southern University, an educational specialist degree from Georgia Southern University, a Master's of Education from Armstrong Atlantic and State University, uh, a Bachelor's of Science in Psychology from University of Florida. He's an NLP practitioner, Master Practitioner, Trainer, Hypnotherapist. Wow, I mean, he's been seen on Fox News, CNN, CBS, NBC, ABC, recently Bravo. Then it goes on and on and on. Uh, you folks are really going to enjoy him tonight. Well, you know, we all have an idea, at least I did. I, in fact, I have never been hypnotized, and I, I told that to you, Steve. I, I've never been hypnotized in my life, of course, until now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've never studied it very much and uh, just never really got into it at all. But I know that it can be extremely powerful, and I, I believe I've been waiting for you, Steve. Anyway. Well, all right. How did you become interested in hypnosis in the first place? Well, I was about uh, it was the mid-80s, and I was in high school. My parents sent me there to Riverside Military Academy in Gainesville, Georgia, where all the bad kids get sent when their parents can't deal with them. And it was there that I discovered a book about hypnosis called The Complete Guide to Hypnosis by Leslie LeCron, a Ph.D. psychologist who's no longer with us. But it, it was anything but complete, but it was enough to get a, call, a uh, high school kid at the time started in hypnosis. I started hypnotizing my roommates, making them do things uh, for my own entertainment, actually, and then I realized I could use my powers for good. So I started hypnotizing the uh, smart kids to study more efficiently and the athletes to uh, kind of get more bang for their buck for exercising, so their exercise went further. All these years later, it's the same thing I was doing back then as a kid in the 80s, except now the uh, smart kids are NASA and the athletes are the Dodgers. Well, i got to tell you, you know, Overall, I mean, I've, I've met a lot of hypnotists, and I've been privy to a lot of hypnotists, and none compare to you as, as an individual. I mean, for one thing, you're an extremely loving human being, Steve, and you have such a soft demeanor. Uh, it, it, is, it is truly extraordinary to, to even be your friend. I, I, I am so happy to have met you, and I'm really looking forward to years of, of enjoying our friendship, but, you know, it, it, it really threw me off that uh, you're, a, you're a, a hypnotist. I'm, I'm not sure why. I just, sometimes we have preconceived notions about it, and uh, I know that's all my stuff, but it was just delightful to find out so many things about you and your talent. Well, thanks, Tony. I'm, I'm always in. <laughs> A lot of people, you know, that at a certain point they'll say, "What do you do for a living?" And so I'm always curious with what about what they thought I did for a living. So what what, what did you what did you think? Did you have a preconceived notion of some sort? You know, I I didn't. You just you're so mild mannered, and you have, like I said, such a, an amazing, loving vibration, and you're truly interested in people. I got that immediately. You know, when it was an interesting night when you and I met with Michelle. And we were, that night was, was, we drove up the mountains of California.
telling you, and the fog was so thick, I don't think you could see three feet in front of your face. No. I, I've never been in quite a situation like that. And it, it seemed as though when we walked in the charming home of, of Tara, uh, the fog lifted, and of course we had transported ourselves into a whole other realm. That's what it felt like to me and, and Michelle. And just just hanging out with you and just being with you and enjoying the short amount of time was, was really extraordinary for me. And I want people to get that energy right now. I, I sincerely want them to get a sense of who you are as, as an individual. And, uh, you know, my conceived notions don't really matter right now, but what, what does a lot of questions that have been on, on my mind, I guess, is how, how exactly does hypnosis work, Steve? Well, hypnosis works by just relaxing a person into a state of mind that we call alpha. Alpha is the lightest state of hypnosis. And in that state, it seems, for, for whatever reason, we have the ability to change. We have the ability to accept subconscious programming. So you just relax someone, use it usually by words. I, I use monotone words, you know, words with no highs and no lows, just sort of talking like this, and I get them into a hypnotic state, and then you're able to uh, implant suggestions at that point. Well, and again, I, I suppose we do this naturally to ourselves, right? Oh, we do, and we experience hypnosis every day. I mean, when we wake up, uh, we may hit the snooze button, and then we go back to sleep, but then we, uh, we wake up again when the alarm goes off again, and we're in a, a very heightened state, which is actually uh, higher than normal awakening consciousness. But then we go back to normal awakening consciousness, which is beta. Then if we get in the shower, we can go drift back down to alpha, and then we get out of the shower. Maybe we have to hurry up, and uh, we're back up to beta, full awakening consciousness. Maybe during the drive to work, we're in alpha. Uh, this is just, you know, a normal scenario for a normal person's day. They will go in and out of in between beta and alpha all day long. The interesting thing is when somebody's in alpha or they're daydreaming or doing something they can do by rote, something they can do like driving or, or showering or something they don't have to pay much attention to, they are in alpha usually, and that's the lightest state of hypnosis. So we are in and out of a hypnotic state all day long. The only difference between that and going there with a, a, a hip, hypnotist or a hypnosis recording are two things. Number one, the hypnotist is going to cause you to go there by using relaxing words. Secondly, they're going to put positive suggestions in your mind while you're there to allow you to change. Wow. Well, I think advertising companies know this all too well, don't they? <laughs> uh, it's amazing how outgunned the average consumer is when it comes to watching TV or even listening to the radio or even looking at billboards. There is so much technology. I remember when I was uh, working on my uh, just my bachelor's degree at the University of Florida, they had, <clears throat> the University of Florida had a great marketing department, and I talk with those guys sometimes, and uh, they had uh, PhD-level psychology students, uh, which I, I was not a PhD-level student at that time, but they had some of our PhD-level psychology students going over there to the advertising department to help them out to uh, really work on some tricks to get people to buy things. So the average consumer is, is vastly outgunned by, by what's coming at them on TV that they don't even realize. Fascinating. Well, you know, this is what I love so much about what you do because it, it enables us to, quote, unquote, take the bull by the horns. You know, if that is indeed happening, and we surely know it is, um, you know, what is our defense? I mean, it, it seems like we're a bit defenseless, but we are not. And truly, Steve, that, that is the most exciting thing. That's why I couldn't wait to introduce you to my uh, friends and everybody on this call because there is something very powerful we can do. Yeah. So let me ask you this. <clears throat> Once you actually have hypnotized somebody, and I know that you, you have years and hours and hours of experience with this, how permanent can the effects be? Well, it's kind of like Tony Robbins says, it's a little bit like tuning a piano. You get out of tune every now and then. So uh, Harvard and Stanford got together uh, a while back and created something called the 
hypnotic scale of susceptibility. I don't really like that word. I like the word suggestibility, but they call it the hypnotic scale of susceptibility. And I've, since studying at Harvard and since uh, completing my doctorate, I have revised the scale somewhat to make it more into a quiz, which is easier to take. But essentially, what the uh, the essence of the research and the essence of the, the test and the quiz that I developed, uh, what they all imply is that we all fall on a scale of suggestibility. We, it's kind of like el electrical conductivity. Every substance on the planet will conduct electricity to some degree. Wood conducts it very poorly. Metal conducts it very well. So people are kind of like that when it comes to hypnotic suggestibility. Some people are very suggestible. Uh, some people are not very suggestible. So it really comes down to uh, when, when you look at uh, getting back to your question, which is a, a longevity, uh, longitudinal type question, how long uh, will the effects last? It really depends on the hypnotic aptitude of the person and the uh, how much exposure they have to hypnosis. So it's, I don't mean to get too convoluted here, but it is a multifactorial question that you asked. But essentially, uh, if someone listens to a recording we found for about three weeks, uh, they're going to be set up pretty well for long-term change. Just the recording. Right. I mean, you can go into a hypnotherapist's office and have a session. It won't be quite as powerful as if, as if you listen to a recording every night for uh, a few weeks uh, of the session, of the hypnosis session. Well, that's very exciting, actually. Um, I, it's such an amazing topic. So, you know, like me, people had lots of misconceptions about hypnosis. What have you found working in the field? Well, a lot of people have the uh, misconception they might go into a coma and not come out of it. Um, yeah, that, that happens quite a bit. I When I had my office in Beverly Hills in the Roxbury Medical Building, I'd have a lot of uh, even actors and producers who would come in and say, I'm not going, going into a coma, am I? And I would say, well, I've got a pile of people in the back room who just wouldn't come out of hypnosis. So. <laughs> Uh, some levity kind of helps to dispel some of the tension that they have, I find. <laughs> so, um, and then I go on to explain the, the basis of it, uh, which is uh, a very sound scientific basis. You do not have the ability to actually go into a coma just from words. Uh, that is something that's reached by uh, physical damage happening. That's how people go into a coma. So you do have the ability to go to sleep, and you do have the ability to go into hypnosis, but you, you will not go into a coma by virtue of listening to someone talk, so you don't have to worry about that. Another common myth is that, and this comes from, uh, you know, the Woody Allen movie, Curse of the Jade Scorpion, for example, where, uh, you know, somebody calls up Woody Allen on the phone and says, Madagascar, and suddenly Woody that. Allen, yeah, great movie. Suddenly he has to rob his neighbor or he has to rob a bank and, uh, you know, becomes his robber programmed by that word and that word sets him off and triggers him to do this stuff. You know, we've got Manchurian Candidate, we've got all kinds of movies talking about how you can manipulate someone with hypnosis, get them to do something against their will, get them to be your, your pawn, essentially. Those things are not true. Those are not based on, on science. Those are things that Hollywood likes and... Uh, I wouldn't really classify Woody Allen as a Hollywood guy, but those are things of, of movie, movie fun, but they're not based in reality. Well, I guess we can clearly see where our misconceptions come from. But really, you know, I, 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 ha I have to admit for a while, you know, I pictured a, a little guy with round glasses and a, a creepy coat on and, and, and looking at you and his eyes are spinning. <laughs> yeah. It, it, so far from that, it's, it's, really quite a joke actually exactly so it really is such a fascinating topic and I'm very excited to to have people experience it uh, in, in such a profound way um, you know there's so many things so many phobias so many different things that people want to change even body parts and you know the sizes of their body and of course losing weight and things like that it, it really seems to be endless where you can go with it is you know can you can you change anything through hypnosis or is there limitations 
Well, I, I believe that you can change anything which the, the brain can regulate. So, for example, experiments were done in the, in the 50s, uh, scientific experiments with medical doctors and uh, PhD psychologists where they would induce bleeding in someone, maybe just a little pinprick in an arm, but induce bleeding and through hypnosis control the bleeding. Uh, dentists have used this for a long time to control bleeding, to, to speed up healing, to calm down their patients. And I'm talking about since the year 1850 or so. Uh, so there's a long history of the intermingling of hypnosis with the medical and dental profession, and there doesn't seem to be a limit. Now, as I've said, uh, there can be some limits based on the hypnotic aptitude of the person, which is actually measurable on a scale, but assu assuming the person has a, a, a reasonable a hypnotic aptitude, which almost everyone does, there are, everyone's, everyone's on that scale from somewhere. No one's a zero. Everyone's at least a one on that scale. So there's, a, there's a, little, a lot of hope for people in terms of alleviating all sorts of uh, situations that they're going through. Well, it seems to me, you know, one of the things is, as far as I'm concerned, I would have to really trust. I mean, trust is a huge factor for me. And that's part of why I'm talking about your demeanor and, and, and the vibration you exude and how much you've accomplished in your life because the trust factor is huge. If, if you're going to be able to suggest things, you know, trusting you becomes paramount, at least in my mind. And as I have been working with your programs, uh, something very astounding happened to me, Steve. I had no idea the amount of ecstasy that I would, I, I wasn't prepared to be ecstatic. <laughs> uh, it was very, very interesting, you know, and, and I, I'm coming from a place where I've, I've never had been hypnotized. Like I said, I had no experience whatsoever. Now I, I am an avid meditator and I've done that for decades. However, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if I'd go to sleep or anything else, but the way you craft your programs is so clever. I mean, truly, truly clever. And and also, your choice of words, Steve, that that really knocked my socks off more than anything. And, and I know, Matthew, you, you as well. Uh, we, we have been so enjoying um, some of your programs and just... Uh, just the way you crafted them, Steve. And so the trust factor is, is huge. And, you know, that's where I think you're set apart from just about anybody in the field, Steve. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Tony. I, um, you know, I've always, my, my grandfather on my dad's side always said, uh, who's a Capricorn like yourself, by the way, Tony. He, <laughs> he always said, uh, distinguish yourself from the crowd. And I've, I've sought to do that. Uh, educationally and morally. I've sought to uh, become highly educated uh, in things that I felt would be pertinent to what I do because my doctorate's in education, but nowadays I'm teaching people how to do hypnosis. And there's no doctorate in, in hypnosis. I mean, there are some you know, non-academic doctorates in hypnosis, but there are no actual doctorates in hypnosis. So there, is, there are doctorates in education, though. So I've, I've sought to become as highly educated as I can to do what I what I feel I must do, which is train the next generation now. And also morally, uh, I believe, you, you know, you should always do do what's right. Uh, people ask me, you know, what makes your hypnosis recordings better than other, others? I, I say, I, you know, I don't know if there's anything that does. I just I just do what I've been trained to do to the best of my ability, and, and that's all anyone can ask for. So, uh, I, I don't toot my own horn. I have sought to get the underpinning that I felt would be helpful. And if those things come across as, you know, me being a, a good guy, well, I appreciate you saying that, Tony. Well, I know you've been featured on ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, Fox News, uh, Bravo, is it? I think the Bravo, Net I don't know exactly yeah. what the Bravo Network is, but, uh, uh, you know, obviously you have gotten tremendous acclaim, Steve, and and that I guess that's what impresses me the most. Is you know, it hasn't gone to your head. <laughs> <laughs> no. You you have uh, what I would guess to be 
able to have kept the same passion about your love for people uh, that you had when you first started getting into it, like helping people get better scores on their exams and, uh, you know, getting the touchdown. <laughs> there you go. So this is, this is an amazing thing. You know, you had made a point and, uh, when we were talking that people, people really do need a coach, you know, and, and if they don't need it, they, they should want a coach, you know, and we all, we all love coaching. Every good team that's out there is good because of the coach. Look at Vince Lombardi. I mean, we could go on and on about coaches, but the coach really sets the pace. And I look at you like a really accomplished coach, Steve, and and I love that. I love the fact that, you know, when you're playing, before you play, if you want to get out there and do and, and accomplish something specific, having a coach is really an important thing to do. So I am just really, really thrilled about that. Well, thanks, Tony. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, an appropriate uh uh, statement and uh, I think that the comparison works. I, I do look at myself as someone who gets in someone's corner and says, "Okay, you first of all, you you are able to do it. Uh, second of all, you are going to do it, whatever it is they're working on." And I have the tools to help them get there. Well, what I've noticed is you took me so deep with these programs that I felt lucid without being able to move my body. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, do people, are they in control when they're under the state of hypnosis? They really are. I mean, you do have that, uh, what we call catalepsy. You know, your your brain, anytime you're dreaming, will, will paralyze your body. It'll make it so it won't move, so you don't act out a dream. So you get a little taste of that when you're in hypnosis. The only difference is you can snap out of it anytime you want because you can kick in the conscious factor in hypnosis and you can say, I'm out of this, and you'll, you'll go right out. So it's just your body attempting to uh, stabilize you while you're seeing images in your mind. It's, it's so fascinating. It really is. And, you know, I, as usual, I, I'm just absolutely thrilled to introduce you to everyone in Roaring Lion. And, of course, I'm going to feature Steve in the Roaring Lion Publishing Portal, and he's going to be uh, he's going to be a nestled guest. We're going to continue to add things in the Roaring Lion store. But on the front page, as usual, I have what I picked out, my, my six favorite programs, and we're going to add to this and add to this and add to this. But I, I'm going to read these titles. Unlimited Confidence. Who doesn't want that? Perfect Radiant Health. Imagine being hypnotized into having your cells know that they're radiant. Auto-suggestion. So, Sexual Pleasure. One of my all-time favorites. <laughs> Con concentration and Focus. Lucid Memory and Allowing Abundance. And these are titles I, I want to share something with you folks that has has truly put me over the top with Steve. You know, at an early age, I attended the University of Wisconsin Conservatory of Music in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, for the past few years, I've been devouring anything I can get my hands on as far as harmonics and their effects on the human body. And in my discovery, in my studies, I discovered that Certain frequencies that that we hear have an extremely powerful effect on us, and the military has come to know that very, very powerfully. Frequencies, you know, we are vibration. We vibrate, and every every we're we're, we're a harmonic waveform is what it comes down to. And you know, no, most of us know this intuitively. So, I I discovered that. The key of C sharp, now for all you musicians out there, you can experiment with this yourself. The key of C sharp has a very, very profound effect on us. Not only on our bodies, but the entire earth as a whole. C sharp is a harmonic uh, note. Uh, it's actually slightly above C sharp, but C sharp 
has a very, very powerful effect even on the earth, even on polluted parts of the earth. It's been found where if you play the note of C sharp amplified on certain parts of the earth, it will reverse pollution. That's how powerful it is. And where am I going with all this? Well, you're going to hear much more about this from me as time goes on. But the reason I'm bringing it up now is because Steve allowed me to master each one of these in the key of C sharp. Now, just listening to that tone, even in the background when you're not doing anything, that alone will give you tremendous clarity. In fact, it will help you to see sharply. C sharp helps you to see sharply. <laughs> and that's an easy way to remember it. So he allowed me to master these programs in the key of C sharp and just listening to the, the music, the beautiful uh, it's ambient music in the background is truly enough to have a profound effect on your body. Now you couple it with Steve's talent to take you into suggestions of abundance, for instance. Uh, you have one dynamite combination, and I'm telling you, ecstasy has, has been my experience over and over again. And so uh, I am going to talk so much more about this, but Steve, thank you so much for allowing me to do that, first of all. And, and these are exclusive to Roy Lion Publishing, and I am just really, really excited about this. Well, my pleasure in letting you do that. I mean, it's, it's an honor to have you put such a powerful treatment on my recordings. It's kind of like the icing on the cake, so thank you. Well, let's talk about abundance, Steve, because that's, that's a pretty good topic for all of us. <laughs> we certainly love abundance. It's all around us. And what, it, what advice would you have for people who, who want to live a, a life of full abundance? You certainly are a supreme example of that. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Tony, and I, I think that abundance has to do with, you know, it's a very personal thing. It, it, uh, some people have next to nothing that we would look at them and say, wow, they don't have much, but they consider themselves abundant, and they truly are, because abundance is really an experience that happens in your mind and in your heart. You can be fulfilled no matter uh, what level you're at, and I feel that you know, in talking to my good friend Joe Vitale last week in New York, uh, we talked about the law of attraction and the secret and so forth, which he was in. And yeah, and it was, uh, you know, it's always very enlightening for me to talk with him. And he was talking about the time when he was homeless and, uh, you know, tuning into the idea of abundance. And it's really not about the the stuff you have. It's about your, your attitude of, you know, being open and completing the cycle of give and take when you... When you give the, and, you, and you receive, you have to be open to both. Some people aren't open to, to one of the two. But if you give and receive, you complete that cycle, and it just gets bigger and better for you in your life. And that's really all Joe tapped into, and that's all I've tapped into, and that's all anyone ever really has to tap into if they want abundance in their lives. Just get used to giving and get used to receiving, and get used to your wishes being fulfilled, because that's what happens when you're properly tuned in to the law of attraction. You're going to put out the positive vibes, they're going to come back to you multiplied, you're going to put them out again, they're going to come back to you multiplied again, and you do that enough over the course of a few years, you will find that your life drastically changes in the direction in which you want it to change. And I'm really getting excited because people are getting a sense of what your beliefs are and who you are as a person. And, and hopefully they, they're beginning to understand what I know about you. And, and as you uh, take them into any kind of a hypnotic suggestion state, they're going to understand what you know and what you're living. It's one thing to be a hypnotist and not have the success. And it's another thing altogether to be suggesting such powerful things and know what you know, Steve. So I am truly excited about this. It, uh, it's truly, truly exciting. So let's, let's keep moving on. What, you know, uh, before I do, I, I have to smile because 
speaking of harmonics, the last time I was with Joe Vitale, he was actually playing harmonica with me. Uh, I was playing guitar and Joe was playing harmonica. We played for about an hour together <laughs> in Austin and we had a blast. He's actually a very good musician and a astounding uh, harmonica player. But uh, yep. it, And yes, you know, I know you've come from a kind of a rough background yourself. Does that have anything to do with your success, you think? I think it does. You know, my dad was an alcoholic. My mom died when I was six years old. She died of leukemia. Uh, wow. You know, I, yeah, then I um, had to live with another family for a while. My dad worked overseas, so I didn't see him much. He he worked uh, for the federal government soundproofing uh, submarines, just in case we had another war. And uh, so fascinating job, but it took him away from, you know, me. So I pretty much, uh, for a while there, grew up without a, a father figure. And then my uh, you know, bless his heart, he was doing what he had to do to to support to support me. He had to he had to get money, and that's what his job required. But uh, then my stepmom came on the scene. We didn't get along. I got sent to military school. So, oh, it was just one thing after another. But I really think that you know, like I said at the beginning of this uh, conversation, it was in military school that I discovered that book on hypnosis. It was the fact that I was looking for an answer that led me to the answer. I was looking for it. I was open to it, kind of like the law of attraction. You have to be open to it, receive it, accept it, and so forth. So I was open to the answer. And for me, hypnosis was the answer because I was able to hypnotize myself to get myself to come out of my shell, to really go for it. I don't think I would have gone this far in education or in my career or have even been able to appear on all those TV shows if I hadn't worked on myself back then. Wow. That's an amazing story. You know... I know what my experience was. And Matthew, I know you've been working with the Abundance uh, Hypnotic uh, Program. What What are some of your comments about it? Well, it's really interesting. You know, I have friends that are hypnotists, and what I found with Steve's recording that was really interesting was it was so much softer. You know, a lot of hypnotists, like we touched on this earlier, but so many hypnotists I've you know, friends with people I really experienced closely that it's very, it, it could be very forceful. And what I loved about Steve was it was like, it felt like a meditation. It was so relaxing. And I listened to it before bed the last three weeks or so pretty consistently every night. I've only missed a few nights. And I have to say, I'm sleeping really well. I mean, it is really relaxing me and really just, it's powerful. And I will, I will say that sometimes I don't make it through the full recording because I, I fall asleep and I get an amazing sleep. So that's a nice little side benefit. But I can really feel an even greater shift happening in terms of prosperity. I mean, visual benefits. Uh, very Steven, am I unique to this or does everyone feel a, a sense of euphoria? I mean, or, or I, I guess it's different with, with everybody, but what, what has been your experience? It is different with everyone. Uh, people do fall into uh, categories, you know, a certain percentage of people, I don't have the percentage in front of me, they will experience euphoria. Some people experience a slight spinning feeling. Some people experience floating. Uh, some people just go right to sleep. So there are a lot of different experiences. My experience is just peace. And just like Matthew, I drift off pretty quickly before my, before my recording's even over. Uh, you'll be happy to know that uh, Professor Hilgard up at UC Davis did some research on that a while back and found out that it's okay if you fall asleep during a recording because your your eyes close but your ears don't. They stay open monitoring right. your environment. If anything happens, you know, if a mother has a baby and the baby cries, she'll be awakened immediately to respond. So because of that surveillance camera, so to speak, with the ears, uh, it, it can also record. So your brain can record information. So falling asleep is fine, and that's usually my experience. Wonderful. Again, that trust factor is huge, so that that's a beautiful thing to hear. And, you know, it's I love the way you crafted these programs uh, because they are kind of skewed to doing them at night, which which is really the best time for me. And then you, you also make the suggestion that if it is time for you to go to sleep, now's the time to go to sleep. <laughs> right. So you can you can rest into it and you know, the last thing we hear before we go to sleep, I know for a fact, plays over and over in your mind. So what a powerful way to fall asleep. And, 
you know, I I did it, uh, the abundance one uh, an hour before this call, and the thing that I you said if you're going to sleep now is a good time. However, uh, you allow that time to where you don't certainly have to go to sleep, and I was supercharged, Steve. You know, most of the time I fall asleep, but this time I. I jumped out of the bed and I, I felt like I felt like I could go the whole rest of another day. I it was, was so tangible. Hard. I got some dinner and Tony called us up and I said, whoa, what did you just do? <laughs> I, just, I just went through the recording and I was ecstatic. <laughs> Again, I, I'm not very impressed very often, Steve, so I, I hope you're really accepting what I'm saying about this. It, it is just, it's truly extraordinary. I, I'm I've never been more excited about uh, offering something because I know it's going to be so powerful for our folks. You know, what I didn't mention to everyone is um, they're normally $120, $119.97. And so, uh, again, Steve allowed us to give $40 off on these programs. And plus, not to mention the fact that the the Platinum Series is the one with um, – we mastered in C sharp. So the Platinum series is included. However, there's another Gold series. The Platinum series is an hour long. The Gold series sells for thirty nine ninety seven, and the Gold series is is it about thirty minutes, Steve? Yes. The Gold series um, are half the time, and they're uh, almost forty dollars. We're giving them free with every platinum series that you buy as well so that's an $80 value um, in fact it's it's like getting the whole hypnosis course free because it's only $79.97 for each one of these and just take your pick uh, I think this is a really good selection of and of course I'm a bit biased on this I love unlimited conscious uh, confidence I love concentration and focus those <laughs> Those are two I'm really uh, excited to dive into. However, allow abundance has really knocked my socks off, and it may be a while before I get off of that one. <laughs> but um, I think these are all really, really good. And the lucid memory, you know, who doesn't want lucid memory? Uh, it's just a, a tremendous thing. And I got to tell you, just the C sharp alone with lucid memory, I'm very excited to hear what people are going to experience on this, Steve. It, it, it's going to be it's going to be mind blowing for a lot of people are going to. And of course, I invite you, Tony, at RoaringLionPublishing.com. As usual, I would love your comments about uh, what you're experiencing with these because it's 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 going to be so much fun to hear any kind of. Uh, comments that you make. So, um, wow, this is really fun. So, uh, let me think about this. Can, can hypnosis help to, uh, to change your thought process, Steve? Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's the main, uh, thing that it brings to the table. People have a thought process of, of poverty sometimes, for example, you know, they're not worthy yeah. of this, not worthy of that. And, the, uh, the abundance recording and, you know, abundance hypnosis in general, when you see a hypnotist for abundance, it, it, they're putting suggestions in your mind telling you that you are worthy of it, and really everyone is worthy of it. You are worthy of what people want to offer you. For example, when you were giving me compliments, uh, you know, a little while ago, which I greatly appreciate, you know, I, I accept that because I've opened my, my mind and my heart to acceptance. Well, some people are offered financial opportunities that they don't feel are right for them because they don't feel that they belong with that crowd or that they should have more than somebody else or that they should leave their peer group and become more successful. And these things are often embedded subconsciously. They're not consciously aware of that. If you consciously ask them, hey, do you want to be a millionaire? They'll say yes. But if you really get down to it, they don't. The reason is, as Dr. Phil would say, there's a payoff for them to stay at a at a, a lower financial level, lower level of income, and that is that they feel more comfortable. Sometimes people have ideas that rich people are bad, or that they're they're jerks, or they're mean, and they don't want to be that way. But these thoughts are harbored at a subconscious level. So 
That's what it does. It changes your thinking by changing the way that you think about your possibilities and what you're actually worthy of. Wow. Well, you know, people feel, I know we get this a lot, people feel oftentimes like they're stuck or they're missing something or, you know, they're, they're just, they get really close to some deal and, and they shoot themselves in the foot or there's so many, so many silly limiting things or somebody says one thing and it it kind of your whole dream comes tumbling down these are these are unfortunate things that happen even as children it, it may be trigger words that somebody said a long 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 time ago where it's lost in your subconsciousness and one word brings it to the forefront and could could really shatter you uh, hypnosis can certainly help things like that can't it oh absolutely i mean we all have those things i mean you know, and the way to test it is next time you stub your toe, what what do you say? Or next time you do something that you didn't mean to do, what do you say to yourself? That's actually a better test. You know, do you say, oh, dummy, oh, I'm such an idiot. A lot of people will, would say something like that to themselves if they made a mistake. And it's not as if they're consciously aware of this. They They go through their lives normally not talking like this to themselves, but then they do something that is a mistake, they shouldn't have done it, uh, they, you know, cut someone off or something, and they, and they have this internal or sometimes vocal uh, reprimand that they give to themselves. So those, if people are doing that, that's a great indication that you'd be a good candidate for hypnotherapy, for some sort of change, because it's this subconscious dialogue that really holds people back. It's really difficult for someone to accomplish something if they really think they're stupid, or if they really think they're an idiot, or if they think that rich people are jerks. You know, these are powerful labels. And if people hold on to those, it becomes a, a barrier between where they are and where they want to be because, you know, in their mind, a stupid person doesn't accomplish things. Uh, and who wants to be a jerk? You know, those, those become powerful labels. So the, the, the wording in a hypnosis recording and in a hypnosis session is designed to, to allow people to let go of those labels that, that really, at this point, they're only holding on to. Sure, maybe it happened when they were a kid, but at this point, they're the ones perpetuating the myth. So we invite people to let go of that. Wow. I mean, truly, people are looking for breakthroughs, obviously. They're looking for getting rid of limitations uh, and living the life they really want to live and breaking through in so many ways. I mean, I, I am so delighted. You know, it's any technique I believe is a permission slip for us to allow our lights to shine. However, if you're attracted to a particular technique, that is the technique I believe you should go towards. And I, I'm encouraging all of you to at least give this a try. There's absolutely no obligation because we will give 30 days uh, free. If there's any reason why you wouldn't like it, we're going to refund you fully. And, you know, I would go even beyond that if you ask me nicely <laughs> because I cannot believe that it's not going to work. If you just try one of these and, again, pick out the one that really resonates with you and give it. That's a good question now that we have you on the line, Steve. What, what is really a good routine? And like, say they, say they got the one on allowing abundance. What, what's a good routine? Well, just listen to it every night as you go to sleep for 21 nights. That's, uh, it's really kind of just plug and play like that. It's designed to be uh, hands-free and pretty much thought-free. I, I, I take care of all, the, uh, all of everything for you. If you just press play, uh, let me do my job as a hypnotherapist. Uh, I will say what I'm supposed to say, and the music will relax you. And even if you fall asleep, as we covered, uh, as Matthew and I uh, tend to, and we listen to my recordings, that's fine. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. So every night for 21 nights consecutively. Yeah, you can skip a few nights here and there. I do, and I'm working on something like motivation, for example. Um, you know, yeah. I'll skip a few nights here and there. It doesn't it? That's fine. Uh, the idea is that you are consistently working on it for 21 days, uh, or nights in this case, listening to it at night if you want to listen to them at night. And uh, you're also focused on it because 
you know, throughout the day you're thinking, oh, that, that hypnosis recording is on whatever subject. So you're focused on that throughout your day also because you're dwelling on it. And it's making you uh, become more mindful of ways that you can enhance that attribute uh, by doing things yourself. So let me ask you a question. Do you actually hypnotize yourself, Steve, with these? <laughs> I do. I listen to my own recordings. Now, I don't... Uh, lie down in bed and act as the hypnotist and the client. I don't say, now, now, Steve, you're going deeper and deeper, because if I fall asleep, then, then the hypnotist, by definition, has fallen asleep as well. So that's why the recordings are better. Well, you know, so they're actually getting to here. So there's a platinum series, which we know is absolutely spectacular. You know, some people don't have time for a full hour. And I know, Matthew, you, you, you said a lot of times you fall asleep before it's done. So how... How about using the, you know, alternating be between the Platinum and the Gold series? Is there any benefit to that, or what would you recommend there? I would just pick a flavor and, and go for it. Uh, some people prefer the half-hour recordings because they tend to uh, kind of come in and out of consciousness for that hour, and they'd rather not, you know, become aware of something than have someone still talking to them as they're trying to sleep. So for some people, they like just the half-hour. It's a... A quick recording, you know, I'm in, I'm out, it's over, and you can get on with your, your sleep. Some people, like Matthew and myself, we just listen to even the full hour recording. We're zonked out after a few minutes, and it doesn't matter. So I would just, since you're getting both anyway, uh, just listen to one one night, one the next. Pick a flavor you like and go with that one for the rest of the three weeks. Well, that's why I was so delighted about you offering this, because, you know, I, that that quick in and out with the gold series is, is really awesome to, to be able to have that. I, I like the full effects personally and um, I've been doing I've been doing the platinum series just because I, I really and like I said I, I did not expect the euphoria which you know when you're you have to understand when we're when we're in a state of euphoria for, for longer than even just a few minutes, we're absolutely making a powerful alteration to our future. If you can stay in that, that high vibration for a duration of time, even more than a couple minutes, actually, you know, I've heard Abraham Hicks say 17 seconds and you're on your way and you go to 68 seconds, you cross that threshold and you're super on your way. So uh, I, I've got to tell you, I, it was over 30 minutes. <laughs> I was in the stratosphere. So I'm, I'm just absolutely thrilled Steve oh very nice yeah I prefer the record the longer ones myself they're more thorough they cover more of the bases and uh, they're just for me they're the way to go but uh, yeah anytime you can maintain bliss for any period of time I say go for it <laughs> <laughs> Matthew is there anything you want to add yeah well actually I have a question for Steve here Steve what would you have to say on let's say goal achievement I know there's a lot of people on the call that are working towards something, whether it be a career goal, a business goal, a fitness goal, how, how does hypnosis help with that? Is it really just to help remove the resistance and the blocks and get them thinking uh, and putting their attention on what it is that they really want to experience? Absolutely. It also helps you uh, set a plan in your mind. You know, I have you in, in my recordings where I talk about setting goals that, are, that relate to that, I have you imagine yourself having already achieved your goal, and then looking back at the simple steps, the easy steps that it took, and you realize at that point, yeah, that it was simple and easy. At the time you're going through it, it seems like a challenge, but if you can reframe it in your mind as being simple and easy and even fun, then it becomes uh, becomes really easy. I also make it systematic, so you know, all the, you put yourself in the future having already achieved it, so you know, uh, you have a better vision of a system that you can use to get there. Anytime someone has a system they can chunk something down into component parts, steps they can take, then they're much, it's it's a lot easier to achieve it. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. I wasn't even thinking of that element of it, but that does make sense. I found that even with the abundance recording, it's, it's like your, your thoughts are just uh, effortlessly positive. Right, yeah, there's the, there's the cheerleading aspect of it as well, which is great. I mean, You've got me in your corner. You've got me telling you that you can do it. And, and really embedding that as a belief system in your mind at a subconscious level. So it's not just like, 
me walking up to you in the street and saying, hey, you can do it. It's me getting into your subconscious mind and giving you that as a belief system, which you accept as your own belief system. Well, that's what I really like, because so many people realize that the subconscious is what, you know, is, is really running the show, and they've tried a lot of things in order to, let's say, reprogram it or shift it, and I like it because you, you don't even really have to be thinking about it. You just, if you're saying they just follow what you're saying and get into the state, and you take it from there. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, getting on a train or a bus or something like that, you know, you're a passenger. You sit. You go ahead and find your seat, get comfortable. I'm driving, and I know how to get there, and I'm going to take you there. That's a great way to look at it. Well, you know, our beliefs are so, so powerful. What, what we believe really guides our life, and we don't even realize that. In fact, if you get upset, folks, a really good phrase is, what would I have to believe in order to feel this way? When you ask yourself that question, you start digging in very, very deeply. And there might be a belief that you uncover that you say, well, what would I have to believe to believe that? And there's another belief underneath that. So I think this is a, an extreme, extremely powerful shortcut to that kind of self-analysis. I believe that getting, I believe that getting this type of coaching from Steve will truly help us cut through all of the crap that has been fed through us to us for, for years and years. And, you know, Steve, something very interesting that you had said about these recordings is we, get, we tend to get rather heady as they're going along and, and the mind can still get a little bit of chatter. But you have a profound technique of sort of a pattern interrupt. Do you want to you talk a little bit about that? Well, I use something, uh, I use a few different techniques in there from the world of neuro-linguistic programming, uh, having studied with a gentleman named Richard Bandler who, who created neuro-linguistic programming. I've learned a few techniques I was able to incorporate in there. I studied with him in the 80s. But uh, one of the things I use is amnesia, and you may think, well, why would, this is a hypnotic technique, amnesia, what, you may think, well, why would we want that in there? Well, the reason is because we get so caught up in analyzing everything. We're listening to a recording that says we're going to lose weight, for example, and we're thinking, no, I'm not. No, I, I actually do like to overeat. I, I don't like to exercise. These are the kind of thoughts that people tend to think, uh, even if it's on a subconscious level. And so having a recollection of the recording after it's over just kind of allows this to fester. I mean, if you're thinking about Steve G. Jones saying, oh, I have got this quality, I've got that quality, and you're thinking, no, I don't. I, I know better. I've tried to lose weight and it didn't work. Well, that's no good. That sort of analysis is no good. So amnesia is in there to scramble the conscious memory of the subconscious programming so that you don't work against it and outthink yourself and overanalyze it. sharing our experiences, I actually, and I don't want to give this away, Steve, I, I really don't, I want people to experience it themselves, but I had talked to Matthew about certain things that you had said in there, and he laughed, and he said, well, that's, that's what Steve described as the, the pattern interrupt, and <laughs> I got to tell you, I laughed out loud, because it was so clever, and cleverly done, that, and it worked uh, flawlessly, and it, it really made me laugh because it, it just feels so good. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like going in for uh, surgery or something like that. You, you don't really know, unless you're a, a doctor, you don't really know what's going to happen. But you know that you go in the front end with a, a challenge. You come out the back end, hopefully, with everything resolved. And the stuff that happens in the interim is really high-tech stuff. I mean, putting someone under opening them up, taking something out, perhaps replacing something. I mean, these are things that really require a lot of skill and training and are done by trained professionals. So it all happens with you just relaxing and closing your eyes and, and letting me, uh, you know, take control for a little while. And really, you're still in control, but I'm just sort of guiding things for a while. 
And yeah, there are a lot of really interesting techniques. If you start, you know, breaking it down and analyzing it, you'll find that there, there are a, a lot of really uh, fascinating techniques. And I, I owe that to those who came before me and those who, who taught me how to do them. Well, Steve, thank you so much. You know, folks, if there's, if there's anything specific that uh, you would like that you think would be clever for us to carry from Steve, uh, please let us know, Tony at RoaringLionPublishing.com. And I, I wanted to thank all of you for your comments so far. It, it's been uh, just a very exciting time for, for me, of course. It's, it's, the, it's the most extraordinary time in my life where I have this opportunity to bring such amazing talent to you. That And, and really, Matthew and I and Michelle and, and Ashley, we're bringing things to you all that that we just love and, and uh, we utilize and any tool that we can bring that may make any difference at all and we're absolutely thrilled to no end and of course we we love you and uh, we just so appreciate all of you and, and the support that you've given me especially as uh, as the new sole owner of Roy Lion Publishing, so I can't begin to express in words how I feel for all of you and and for you too, Steve. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Tony. It's an honor to be part of this. Is there anything in closing you'd like to share? Well, I always like to leave people with the with this, which is uh, since we've been talking about music, this is very pertinent. Uh, a quote from the musical group America, uh, which is about the. <laughs> And it's about the Wizard of Oz, and it goes like this. Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man that he didn't didn't already have. And the takeaway from that is that you already have everything that you need in order to change. You already have the ability to be more motivated, to lose weight, to stop smoking, to overcome fear of flying, to work on whatever it is you want to work on. You have that ability within you. But sometimes you need a gentle reminder of the greatness and the power and the beauty that is within you, that awesomeness that's within you. And that's where hypnosis comes in. That's where hypnosis steps up and says, hey, remember how great you are? So if you feel that you need a helping hand, getting back on track, someone to remind you of your awesomeness, then that's what hypnosis is all about. Fantastic, folks. Please give yourself a, a, a chance to try this and uh, you will be so delighted, and I want to hear about it, and I'm very, very excited. Steve, I love you. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you so much, and um, don't miss uh, Matt Fury next week. Thank you all so much. Much love. Please visit stevegjones.com for your free hypnosis recording, and I hope you have an outstanding day.